All right, hey everybody, welcome back. It is day three, it's championship day here at the Kansas City Convention Center. Championship day of the Triple Crown NIT, our last day of coverage. Welcome back to Adrenaline Volleyball. Darren Tipton joined by PK and Sammy. And one word to describe the feeling right now is electric in the Convention Center, PK. Um, yeah, I mean, electric is the word. Um, here it is, championship game. Everybody's putting all they have left in their tank out on the floor. So it's just great to see all the energy that the girls are bringing this morning. I mean, we already interviewed a couple of girls from TAV 14 Black who are heading to the championship game. And one of them even said, like, one word to describe how she feels right now is just awesome. And I would say, yeah, that is exactly the word to describe the vibe in the room right now. Well, Tammy, the other thing is the pace of today, by the time we walk in, there's already a semifinal match. When we get set up, there's a semifinal match going on. You turn around, there's third, there's placing matches going on. There's quarterfinals in other age groups. Everywhere you look, there's a high-intensity match all around this convention center. Yeah, we were here at, what, 7.30 <laughs> this morning, and there was already matches that were almost done. Yeah. I'm like, holy cow. But, I mean, yeah, all courts are being used. I mean, as you said, championship courts, I mean, I think they're playing back-to-back-to-back, to back to back, so we're going to be at 11 to 1.30 is going to be go, go, go. Yeah, and those are actually live-streamed on ESPN and then YouTube for the Open Division uh, or the Younger Division Championships. So to get to the court uh, just behind us is, is a very, very big deal. And you feel that as you sit just the intensity, PK, of the courts that we've been to so far. It's just a different feel from day one and two. Well, I mean, yeah, so day one and two, I mean, tournaments can start out slow a little bit. I mean, teams, especially this early on in the club season, they're starting to feel each other out. I mean, maybe playing with new people. But by the time you get to that day three, it's like pretty much everyone has had to have locked in. It's like you got all of your ruts out. You're finally comfortable and in your groove. So, like, once you hit this day, it's like go time. Well, I would also say, like, Every single court is playing at such a high level right now that you could walk around from wall to wall and not really know who's competing to go to this elite or yeah. open championships. And I think that's what's really cool about this Triple Crown event. Absolutely. And I think you, you just nailed it right there. Every court, or what they're playing for, they're not disappointed. They're playing for a higher seed no matter what match mm -hmm. it is. Right, and they know that's going to affect their rankings the rest yep. of the season. Um, and obviously, they want to do the best they can. They put all this time in. But we did talk to a team right away this morning. They're like, we came out a little slow, and that cost us. Yep. So every match is important. And I guess when you're at the most competitive tournament of the year, um, it would be like that. We've pinpointed some athletes. We've pinpointed some teams to keep an eye on. Big thing from former athletes that have been in this situation. Day three of a three-day tournament, what's important? <laughs> Hydration, rest, um, and just playing your style of your game. I would agree with those things. I mean, like staying hydrated, like you can feel tired, your legs might start to feel a little bit dead, but just making sure you're keeping yourself energized and keeping yourself mentally in it because obviously the most pressure comes on day three. So just keeping yourself at an even place mentally just so you can like, push through those. Well, we're going to push through this. We're not mentally tired, but our legs might be a little tired after three days. We're going to give you our best. The athletes are going to do the same. We've got a great show coming up. Our last day from Kansas City, interviews, highlights, and much, much more coming up. We'll be back after a word from our sponsors. All right. Good morning, Adrenaline Volleyball. My name is PK, and I am here with Sophie and Nyla from TAV 14 Black, our first two heading to the championship game today. So, ladies, what was that like playing in the semifinals just now? It was an incredible atmosphere, and I think we did a really good job just trusting each other and going all out in the semis, which helped us like get our way to the championship. So I'm really proud of us. Um, it was an incredible game. I think we trusted each other a lot, and we made sure that we were on top of the game. And we just kept on going next point mentality. Yeah. All right. So three-day tournaments, they can get long, they can get hard. Here we are, the morning of day three. Yeah. How did you guys prepare yourself the first two days to get yourselves ready and stay energized for this championship day? Um, Josh McKinney did like little yoga sessions with us, and we stretched out a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. We, the stretching really did help, and we just made sure to have like that next point mentality and like keep keep our energy up, and make sure like we're drinking and eating the right foods and stuff like that, so we can have our energy like preserved. Okay, so you guys are sitting here at one of the biggest recruiting tournaments that happens in AAU volleyball, about to play in the championship game. Can you describe that feeling in like one to two words? Just like, give me like, what does that mean to you? Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, it's incredible. It's 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 a privilege for sure. 
I think that's all I have for you guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> good. good luck, you guys. Hey, hey everybody, I'm joined with Crystal Wilburn of Skyline at 15, just a big quarterfinal match victory over Legacy. Chris, thanks for joining us. Yes, sir. And you had a couple big time back row attacks down the stretch in that third row, or in that third set, excuse me, seemed really comfortable in the big moment. Yes, sir. Um, I think a big role is trusting your teammates and knowing that your setter is going to get you the ball in tight games and just swinging away. You feel more comfortable back row up at the net? Do you have a preference on where you attack from? Um, I think front row is, um, I'm very comfortable there with my setter and trusting my libero and my back row players to cover me, but I'm still very comfortable in the back row with my setter. Yeah, your libero did an amazing job keeping yes, you guys in system. Well, you in the back row too, digging up a couple hard hit balls down that third set. Talk about you guys just playing in environments like this all the time. Do you get nervous in big environments or are you guys used to it? Yes, sir. Um, I think staying calm is really important and you know, trusting your teammates and wanting to win and having the mentality, I want to win and I want to win this game and play hard. And so you swinging away and you know, having the mentality, I'm going to get every single ball off the floor. And, and you guys fell down early, you know, rallied, obviously kept your composure. Was there ever a time you guys a little bit nervous or are you just one point at a time? Yeah, I think we get nervous and serve receive sometimes, but I think staying calm is really important and trusting your teammates. What's what do you think the main strength of your game? Um, I think hitting and uh, my range with the ball and knowing where to go and my back row players and my libero really helped me know where to hit. And so now you guys catch your breath real quick and now you're headed on to the semis for another big time test. Yes, sir. So we'll delight on a day like this knowing that you have to play three very, very high level matches to win a championship. It's very stressful. You have to rest your body in um, games that are more easy. And you know, the coach is really good at resting our good players. So I think that's really important. Absolutely. Well, we appreciate your time. We appreciate your play. Yes, We're sir. excited to watch you. We're going to let you get rehydrated, rest your body a little bit. Good luck in the semis. Thank you. All right, we'll be back after this.
Okay, hey everybody, I'm joined with Crystal Wilburn of Skyline at 15. She's a big quarterfinal match victory over Legacy. Chris, thanks for joining us. Yes, sir. And you had a couple big time back row attacks down the stretch in that third row, or in that third set, excuse me. Seemed really comfortable in the big moment. Yes, sir. Um, I think a big role is trusting your teammates and knowing that your setter is going to get you the ball in tight games and just swinging away. You feel more comfortable back row up at the net? Do you have a preference on where you attack from? Um, I think front row is, um, I'm very comfortable there with my setter and trusting my libero and my back row players to cover me but I'm still very comfortable in the back row with my setter. Yeah, your libero did an amazing job keeping yes, you guys in system. Well, you in the back row too, digging up a couple hard hit balls down that third set. Talk about you guys just playing in environments like this all the time. Do you get nervous in big environments or are you guys used to it? Yes, sir. Um, I think staying calm is really important and you know, trusting your teammates and wanting to win and having the mentality I want to win and I want to win this game and play hard. And so you swinging away and, you know, having the mentality, I'm going to get every single ball off the floor. And, and you guys fell down early, you know, rallied, obviously kept your composure. Was there ever a time you guys a little bit nervous or are you just one point at a time? Yeah, I think we get nervous and serve receive sometimes, but I think staying calm is really important and trusting your teammates. What's what do you think the main strength of your game? Um, I think hitting and uh, my range with the ball and knowing where to go and my back row players and my libero really helped me know where to hit. And so now you guys catch your breath real quick and now you're headed on to the semis for another big time test. Yes, sir. So what we'll delight on a day like this knowing that you have to play three very, very high level matches to win a championship? It's very stressful. You have to rest your body in um, games that are more easy. And, you know, the coach is really good at resting our good players. So I think that's really important. Absolutely. Well, we appreciate your time. We appreciate your play. Yes, We're sir. excited to watch you. We're going to let you get rehydrated, rest your body a little bit. Good luck in the semis. Thank you. Introducing Hourathon, the fastest, easiest way for groups to raise money. Hourathon is a one hour text and call a thon. There are no emails, no apps, no logins, and no personal information to input or share. The whole fundraising event lasts just 60 minutes, and you get paid in 48 hours once it's over. Thousands of groups of all sizes across the U.S. have used Hourathon to raise millions of dollars in just one hour. Contact us today to start your own Hourathon fundraiser. All right, hey, welcome back, everybody. Again, day three of our coverage, the Triple Crown NIT, and I am joined with uh, Nebraska Verbal, class of 24, Skylar Pierce. And Skylar, great to A, see you play again and talk with you again, but how have you been since October when we talked last? Um, pretty good, just doing sports, basketball, and volleyball right now. Getting to the end of my basketball high school season right now, so doing very good. Yeah, and you don't have any problem staying busy as we follow your social media. Uh, you don't have many days off, do you? No, not at all, but <laughs> I like it that way, so. Well, and talk about talk about that structure and, you know, the hours that you put in between basketball practice, volleyball workouts, homework, and then your volunteering. I mean, you have to be extremely organized, detailed person. Um, I would say so. It's kind of just like a schedule thing like I will go through like the school day and go to that but then I'll go basketball practice right afterwards and volleyball practice and I'll try to get a workout in between the basketball and volleyball practice and then come home do my homework but it's kind of just like saying balance getting your homework done during class is what I try to do is get it all done during school so that I can focus on basketball and volleyball and not have to really sh stress about anything going on in yeah. school ball. Um, we talked off camera to ask you this but how is this year different knowing your college, knowing your future, as opposed to a year ago, knowing you're gonna have options, but really just getting in the heart of your recruiting. How, how, how do you feel different now? Um, I wouldn't say the pressure's off, because now I'm, I wouldn't say the pressure's exactly off, just because now I'm focusing on one college and just still trying to impress them and yep. improve in my game. But I feel like it's not at, also not as stressful, because you're not worrying about all the colleges looking at you. You just have to improve your game, keep working on yourself. And I feel like that's, pretty much the difference between this year and last year. Just continuing working on my game so I can get ready for the college level. 
And, and so let's go into that with your game. I mean, obviously, the attacking, the offensive end, the explosion are all strengths. What are some things you're really trying to hone in and, and improve on? Um, some of the things that I'm really trying to work on this season is serve-receive. It's a big part of the game. It's serve and pass type of game. So I know that that's something I really need to improve on, just keep it building on. Because I'm doing it. I've been doing a good job of keeping it consistent, but I need to keep improving on that skill and then just keeping my serves in and just doing my thing. Just working on that serve and defensive side, I think, will help my game. Uh, talk about this environment, this tournament. Because I was even talking to a coach. One of the downfalls of Nationals, right, the last match, everybody's gone. Right. And here, the way this court was packed, mm -hmm. right, you played in that, you know, a year ago. I mean, just talk about the intensity every match of this tournament and, A, that you guys get to be at home, too. Um, the SBU is great this tournament. It's probably one of my favorite tournaments just because of that. Everybody is usually, this is a close place, so a lot of people can stay a little bit longer until their flights or driving home. Yeah. So a lot of people get to stay and watch the games. And it's just a fun atmosphere and fun environment just to be like on the court with everybody around you and having like your teammates celebrate you, the fans celebrating you. It's just a great atmosphere. Let's talk about, uh, because the last month or so, we've been focusing on, focusing on some of the posts you've done with Max Out Mindset. The mental approach, and we talked about this when we met you in the fall, very important. Talk about the work you may be doing with them, and why is that a strength of your game? Um, right now with Max Out Mindset, I'm working on building my confidence, because after the high school season, I wasn't the most confident in myself. So I've been working with them, building my confidence, not just on the court, but off the court. And kind of just being more sure of myself and building that side of my mindset. Um, I believe it's really important to work on this mindset. Start it while you're young so that you're already ready to go into college because once you get into college, you want to be able to have that confidence in yourself and be able to play at the highest level all the time. And I think now that I'm starting to work on it now, it's going to get me even more prepared for the college level. Well, and, and I want to ask you another question, if you would, because you know, we talked earlier, there's a lot of girls younger athletes, athletes series that follow you, they know you're going to Nebraska. You just said there's times you even doubt your confidence, yes. right? And, and talk about that because it's one of the things with athletes, it's very common, but to know that, hey, Skylar Pierce even doubts herself. And then what did you do or what have you done to improve on that and to get your confidence back? Um, I think it's just like the positive self-talk to myself. I hold myself to a very high standard, so I think there would be moments if I, when I did mess up, it wouldn't would be the first mistake, but like the same mistake, then I'll start getting in my head about it. And I think it's when I started having those positive thoughts and those positive mantras that I started like thinking about and really like focusing on, that really helped me in my confidence game. Started building my confidence up for this season. Honestly, I want to talk. We, I think it's important, as important as your skill on the volleyball court, right? If all your social media, we've got to know you. Is just a your positivity and. I think your kind heart and your thankfulness, right? And you literally, I think, reply to anybody that mentions you, right? And and it's and it's genuine. Why is that important to you? And why do you take the time in your busy schedule to continue to do that? Because not many people do. Well, I just think it's really important to thank the people who either shout you out or even are just watching you, just being so, like, I'm so grateful to have these opportunities and the fact that people are sharing my name or posting stuff and tagging me in it, like, that just means so much to me. And I think it's just the right thing to do to tell somebody, thank you for posting me or, like, thank you for coming to watch. I just feel like that's so important that, like, players have, like, that gratitude toward people and, like, understand that, like, it's, like, it's a good thing and, like, it's okay to say thank you to people. It's okay to post a thank you, like, post, like. People want to see that slash. It's just genuine. It makes other people feel good too. You know, and another thing, I think it rubs off, and whether it was directly with you or not. But like, uh, we interviewed Ashley got us earlier this week, right? I know she follows you and comments, and it's almost like she's following what you do. She does the exact thing. To me. Everything's a positive comment, telling everybody thank you, right? And and another athlete, Rhea Dawson, actually, we've noticed her, and she's in Kansas City as well, mm -hmm. and it's like the exact same thing. And here I am as an old man reading this stuff and it makes my day to read these comments yeah. you know it really does help so i think you're really having an effect on you know peers and it's rubbing off we're seeing more of that it's got to make you feel pretty good oh yeah for sure one it's just great to see people posting and like knowing that people maybe people are looking at my stuff and that are saying like hey she's saying thank you i should do that too the fact that i'm having that impact on people it feels really good and i hope people keep saying and keep posting stuff like right. that well, and the other thing too is we started following that and we didn't know what kind of 
athletes those two were. Mm -hmm. We just followed and liked their stuff because it was positive right. every day and that's so refreshing. So yeah, absolutely keep it up. And again, I told you know your folks that, I told you that, I think that's as important um, as the ability and everything you do on, on the volleyball court. So, well, I'll tell you what, we're gonna let you go and I'm sure you have something else to run to. Basketball practice. Basketball practice, of course. Yep. We are going to make sure we get a chance to see you again and if not next fall for sure. We thank you for all the time you spent with us. Mm -hmm. We thank you for your amazing attitude. Just keep up the good work. Thank you guys. Yep. Take care, we'll be back. PK, it's going to wrap up our coverage for our first time here at the Triple Crown NIT. As you're walking away, what are your thoughts going to be on this tournament and the talent of volleyball here in the U.S.? I mean, my thoughts on this tournament was just one, wow, what a talented group of people we saw here today. I mean, even from court 63 over here to court 13, you couldn't even tell who was competing for a championship because there was just so much fight and grit in every single point that we saw. Um, and it's also very early in the club season, right. so I expect to see this energy only get higher and better as the season continues on. I heard uh, two coaches say, I wish they would do one of these again in April. Well, it's everybody's there. No, I'm sure the Triple Crown people are like, no, this is plenty. But it is an amazing tournament, and everything lived up to the billing. The college coaches were here. The talent was here. The intensity was here. But Championship Monday had a special feel. Right? I mean, like, this felt different than either of the other two days. I mean, it definitely did, and that's how any championship game would feel. And you can always say, like, yeah, it's just another game, but when the big W is on the line, it's always going to feel different. I mean, the pressure's on, all the attention is on you. I mean, you probably couldn't walk around anywhere around this court while any one of those championship games are going on because everybody just wanted to see what was going on because it is a championship yeah. game. It is the top two teams at one of the biggest tournaments showing down to one another, so everybody wanted a piece of it. When I think we get big crowds like that and younger athletes watching the stars of the 17s, the 18s, right? That's how you build the sport when you get bigger and bigger crowds, like show up here every year. That's what builds the sport. So with thanks to the Triple Crown staff, um, obviously they run an amazing event. They run several amazing events, but more importantly, what they do for female sports. With that, athletes, we thank you for your time. We can't wait to see you later down the road. That's going to wrap up our coverage, the Triple Crown NIT on Adrenaline Volleyball.